Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Governor Cuomo of New York has signed a new law authorizing abortion up until the day of your birth. Today we interview the pastor who owns a bookstore that is protesting that law, John Speed. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. The governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, has now signed a new law in New York State. It authorizes not only abortions, but late-term abortions, partial birth abortions, all the way up until you are out of the birth canal, and then there's some question about whether an infant ought to be protected. But today we interview a pastor from Syracuse, New York. His name is Pastor John Speed. And he is not only the pastor of Christ is King Baptist Church, he is also the owner of a bookstore. The Christian bookstore collects New York State sales tax when they sell books, but not last week. They protested the taxes in New York State that are going to be going to kill unborn children. I wanna to welcome to the program a first time guest, Pastor John Speed. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you so much, it's an honor to be here. So I'm inspired by your website. You own a bookstore and you took a financial risk by closing your bookstore so that you would not have to collect taxes that would go to pay for abortions. Why did you do this? Well, the before the um, they voted on the law, our church did what we could to try to contact legislators. We even had people there at the Capitol the day that they voted with signs, doing what they could to lobby. And uh, we do regular abortion clinic ministry, that sort of thing. We're interested. We did a documentary called Babies Are Murdered Here. And uh, we're very interested in this issue. And so the night that it passed, I couldn't sleep. It just really burned my heart. And I prayed and just asked God, what, what should I do? And went to sleep, woke up in the morning. I thought, you know what? I'll just print this sign out. I'll put it up in the window. We'll go home, lock it up, and just say to our customers, listen, we're, this is our position. Our intent was to notify our customers and really just say to them, we're grieved over this. And we put it out on social media so that our customers, if they were going to come to the store, we put it on Google Business, everywhere we could think of, on our website, so that if they came, were planning on coming, they would know not to come. And it was a courtesy. And um, it ended up going viral, and uh, it, which was a shock to us. Well, I'm gonna read the sign. Here, I'm reading from your website, which is johnspeedbooks.com. By the way, I recommend everybody go there and buy some books today. But the sign says this, we are closed today, January 23rd. It is a day of mourning in New York in honor of the thousands of babies that will die in the years to come under the Reproductive Health Act. We shall not be collecting sales tax on this day. We will resume regular business tomorrow, collecting sales tax under duress. So you're not a tax protester. Uh, you will pay your taxes. You're just saying you closed on that day because you wanted to make a statement. Yeah, and you know, really the words under duress, you know, I'm trying to make the statement that while I continue to pay sales taxes and be a law-abiding citizen, um, I'm doing it against my will. And um, the the irony is that the response has been so overwhelmingly positive that we're going to actually have to close the bookstore now uh, for maybe the next two weeks to catch up the orders. <laughs> and uh, so there's two weeks where we're not going to be paying uh, sales tax from walk-in business. You know, if we get online sales from New York State customers, we'll pay that sales tax under duress. But, uh, you know, um, it's ironic. I, that wasn't part of the plan either. None of this was planned. There was no plan. <laughs> this just happened. And what the Lord is doing as we go along here, I just think is fascinating. 
I agree, you took the financial risk of not having any income on that day. And instead, I think uh, right now your, your website says you receive 400 orders, mostly from out of state people who are buying books. It's probably more than that now. And hopefully after our TV interview, you'll get another 100, uh, johnspeedbooks.com. So you're gonna have to close your bookstore just to fill those orders because God is blessing you by finding agreement and the pro-life community is coming to your assistance. Yes, and an amazing, amaz I don't even know right now, I couldn't even put the exact number, coming even close to what the numbers are for our orders right now. Um, people ask me, well, how much money have you made? I'm like, I'll tell you when we're done. I really, I don't know. And they're not just buying one or two $3 books. They're buy we sell used and rare books. People are buying $50 books, $75 books, and some people are buying like five, 10, 15 books. We're sending out boxes of books. It, this is, I don't know that it's ever happened in the history of internet, uh, independent internet used and rare book selling that anyone has had a run on their bookstore. I can't go anywhere to find advice on how to handle it because it hasn't happened. And so we're sort of charting new territory here just from a business standpoint. We're trying to make adjustments on the fly. Um, it's fascinating. And you also sell gift cards. So if someone, you know, maybe for Valentine's Day or a birthday coming up, they could buy a gift card to your bookstore and anyone in the country can use that to get any book they want. But your church is or is not connected to the bookstore. Is this a nonprofit charity or is it a for-profit business? And, and what kind of books do you specialize in? It's a for-profit uh, bookstore, but we the church meets here because we're essentially a small church plant, about 25, 30 people on Sunday morning. And uh, we have some of the, like this kiosk behind me rolls out of the way and we just set up right in the middle of the bookstore. And so the bookstore helps provide my income, but it also helps provide a place for the church to meet. And so we pay you know, taxes on the income that we make, obviously, right? And so, uh, you know, it's, it's not your typical bookstore. It's not typical in another way in that while we have a large amount of theology, uh, in fact, that's a specialty that we have, and we have like the Christian fiction behind me, we also sell all kinds of used and rare books. And so it's essentially, we I'm a Christian who runs a bookstore. It's not really a Christian bookstore in this typical sense. It, I'm a Christian who runs a bookstore that we've had people from the ACLU come in here and buy books. Um, I've sold books to people who are um, executives at NBC, um, you know, uh, you know, authors, actresses, are, you know, artists. We sell all kinds of books, and so, but we have a lot of theology, which gives us great witnessing opportunities when people ask, "Hey, what's with all the theology that you have?" Well, I think reading a good Christian book especially the Bible, but other Christian books, biographies of missionaries and so forth, is really a way to inspire people to encounter God in their own private time. Turn off the TV, read a good book. Don't even watch our show today. Just just read a good Christian book and maybe you'll get some of the message that John's trying to uh, get across. T let's take a short break. When we come back, I'll ask Pastor John, why is his church interested in visiting the state capitol? This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. 
Do you ever pray and sometimes you feel like your prayers are hitting the ceiling and they don't get to God or maybe you don't get the result that you hoped for? I'm Dr. Chaps and I wanna make available to you a new resource, a four part video Bible teaching series on how to pray effective prayers. Did you know God has given us instructions in the Bible? For example, in 1 Timothy 2, there are four different Greek words for four different kinds of prayers, supplication, petition, intercession, and thanksgiving. If you don't understand the way God teaches us to pray, then we cannot expect the result for which we hope. I'm asking you to get this important Bible video teaching series on DVD for a suggested donation of only $30. Call us right now at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and get this important video resource for your family. Call us right now defending your religious freedom. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again by Pastor John Speed of Syracuse, New York. Pastor, you lead Christ is King Baptist Church, and I wonder, it's a four hour drive, literally, from Syracuse all the way to Albany, where the state capital is, if you go along Highway 90 there. Uh, why are your church members willing to go all that way just to speak to their state representatives? I think it might be a little shorter than that, but um, anyway, besides the point, they uh, they go because the people that went from our church in particular are just very passionate about it. The family that went, they've been involved in pro-life interests for the last 30 years. And so, you know, we our church obviously has made a statement when we did that Babies Are Murdered Here documentary, which is available for free on YouTube. Um, you know, we wanted to just address this issue. And so when you've got it going on, when it's, when this, this evil bill um, is being put forward, you do everything that you can to try to stop it. Even if very few others are trying, um, you, you do all that you can. You, you want to be able to sleep at night <laughs> to know that babies are being murdered in this state. And they always have been, by the way, this bill just makes it more obvious, but since 1970, three years before Roe, New York State made abortion legal. And so uh, there's a lot of blood on our hands here. And um, this is an opportunity for us to expose that and to uh, really try to inspire other people to do something, to do something. Well, New York is one of those blue liberal Democrat states and they're doing the opposite of what is happening in states like Iowa, in North Dakota, in Ohio, where they're passing heartbeat laws. I just saw one pop up in Florida. I wonder if that will pass. My friend, Representative Mike Hill is bringing that to the Florida legislature, uh, where they're protecting innocent life in the womb, whereas New York and Colorado and California, they're passing laws to strengthen abortion protection, even fund it with taxpayer dollars why do you think is the big contrast and uh, what is your belief on when does life begin? I'll start with that last part. Life begins at conception. I mean, that's just a matter, obviously it's a matter of what we know the Bible says, but it's a matter of science. Uh, it's, you know, you don't have a giraffe in the womb at conception. You've got human life there. And so that's just obvious. Prenatal science proves that. Um, the contrast, I'm a, and I, I don't know if you'll agree with me on this or not, but the contrasts aren't as great as as we think, as we sometimes are led to believe. Even the heartbeat bills, why I think it's a it's good that they're doing something. Some of these heartbeat bills are written in such a way, and I think the Florida bill is written to have the abortionist actually check for the heartbeat. Now, when you've got an abortionist who is um, being paid to murder the baby. I'm guessing they're not going to find the heartbeat. And wow. so even with, with those things, we re I think we have to take it up a notch. I think we have to go for, we have to go for it. Uh, we, we can do that from a lesser magistrate perspective. Cuomo has said to the federal government, we will not, we're going to ignore your immigration laws, right? And so far he's been able to do it. So what would stop a conservative county or a conservative village in upstate New York, which absolutely would love to send a message to Cuomo, 
to say not here and not now. We are going to make abortion illegal in, say, Genesee County. We're going to make abortion illegal in Lewis County, even if there's not an abortion clinic there. Just say it won't happen here. And uh, send the message and just say, look, we're making a sanctuary county for the unborn or a sanctuary village for the unborn, for that matter. And we stop looking at it just from a national perspective. We should look at it, but we ought to do something local. And everybody can do that. You can petition your city council. I think you're right. We've had Pastor Matt Truella on our program. He talks about the doctrine yes. of the lesser magistrate. Uh, he's a dear friend of this program and also supportive of a, a group called Abolish Human Abortion, AHA does really radical messaging around the country. And I think they help promote your protest. And I've, I read about you on Facebook before I even uh, had my, my uh, talent coordinator reach out to you. Uh, uh -huh. I'm, I'm just so grateful for your stand. We need to take another short commercial break. When we come back, I'm gonna ask Pastor John Speed about specific actions that churches can take to end abortion. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Are you frustrated at the direction your country is headed? Are you ready to fight for a cause and change the world? Do you believe God has called Christians to make a difference? Announcing a new book by Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt entitled How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, a step-by-step -step guide to take back your country. Dr. Alan Keyes wrote the foreword saying, this book needs to be placed in the hands of every millennial and Bible-believing pastor in America. In How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, Gordon Klingenschmidt equips you with 30 powerful political tools in a 30-day devotional. His 15 inspiring true stories of political victory prove the effectiveness of these methods. You don't even need to get elected to take back your government. By becoming the media, gathering petitions, building an army, and prayerfully fighting the right enemy, you can reverse bad laws and help establish the kingdom of God right now. But if you read this book, you just might get elected too. Order your copy today. It's available in the Superstore at WND.com on Amazon, and you can get the first chapter free right now if you visit the website schooloflibertyorg Again, that's schooloflibertyorg That's schooloflibertyorg It's time to take back your country. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Pastor John Speed is leading the way and he's got a website, johnspeedbooks.com. Again, johnspeedbooks.com. If you missed the first part of the show, he is the pastor who closed his bookstore and forwent profits, uh, skipped over a day of profits in order to protest the abortion law and he will not send sales taxes from January 23rd to the New York state government because he was closed on January 23rd. Uh, Pastor, you got a great response. Your, your protest went viral and now people are ordering books at johnspeedbooks.com. But you also pastor a church which has pro-life activists. Are there a lot of abortions done there near Syracuse, New York? And where do your people go out and protest? What do they do? Uh, well, um, there are a lot of abortions in Syracuse. There's a Planned Parenthood right here in Syracuse. Uh, and there is another OBGYN in DeWitt that does 50% of their business is abortion. They could be 
uh, saving a baby in one room, and in the next room, they're murdering a baby. I just want to go back to something you said earlier. We definitely appreciate much of what um, Abolish Human Abortion does. Uh, we're not the, – the things that we do um, are a little bit different than what they do uh, in the sense that we're really focused on the local church. We really believe in the ministry of the local church, and you, you had mentioned that. We go out to the clinics. We preach out there. We offer real help. I've offered to adopt babies out there. It's never happened, but I've offered many, many times. And um, uh, we, I maintain the Babies Are Murdered Here uh, Facebook page. We're working on a sequel to Babies Are Murdered Here this year called Babies Are Still Murdered Here. Uh, funding has been raised through um, uh, End Abortion Now. Uh, you can go to endabortionnow.com and get some gr fantastic free resources for training your local church to go out. There's video resources. There's things that they send you. They've even sent out signs in the past. More than 300 churches are going out all across the country preaching the gospel and offering help outside of the clinics. And um, it thousands of babies have been saved you can do it it's just a matter it's just like this you just have to decide you you're gonna do something about it and after this much time man we got to do something whether you hang a sign in a window certainly pray um but we we got to go <laughs> we're we're called to go pastor we have a praying audience and i'm glad you mentioned that because Oftentimes when we get a pastor on the program, we invite you to lead our audience in prayer. Is that something you would like to do with us right now? Oh, I would love to do that. Heavenly Father, we bow before you at this moment and in this time, and we don't know all that you're gonna do, but you do. And Lord, we pray that all across this land, you would raise up local churches to go to the clinics with offers of real help and the gospel of Jesus Christ that can change the hearts of those who oppose what we're saying. Lord, we pray that not only would we see babies saved, but Lord, that we would see souls saved outside of these clinics. Lord, help us to use these resources that are available to us and help us, Lord, to, to seek your face and to seek your glory. And we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, and Father, we pray for Governor Cuomo and all the state representatives and state senators of New York, uh, that they would repent of the evil that they have done. I know this is already a law, but I pray that it is not put into the New York State Constitution. Uh, if they rely on the argument that Roe versus Wade is already in the federal constitution, uh, which I don't agree with, but Lord, why would they need to put it into the New York State Constitution as well? Please stop that progress and reverse the evil doing that is happening by our elected officials in New York. We pray your blessing on them and the conviction of the Spirit of God in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pastor, I don't know, um, I was a legislator, I was in the Colorado State House of Representatives and I know that there's a difference between when something becomes a law and when something is put into the Constitution. That was sort of the spirit of my prayer uh, what is the progress to date, as far as you know, and, and what did Governor Cuomo say? Why did he try to do this? That's been going on for a long time. Some I've heard some numbers as long as 10 years that he's been trying to push this Reproductive Health Act. And so um, that's the history of it. Uh, it is not part of the New York State Constitution. The New York State Constitution, as far as I understand it, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I've heard about an effort in the state regarding other issues to do a, a uh, revisit of the Constitution and it would come to a, a vote of the elector, you know, of, of the citizens. Uh, so it is not, as far as I know, it's not part of the Constitution. So you have a similar issue here. Yes, it's law or it's something that they passed, but laws can be repealed. And um, they're trying to hurt is they're trying to say that this won't be able to be repealed. I don't, I don't know about that. Unless it became part of the Constitution, there was a vote that I don't know anything about. Um, and so that lesser magistrate concept, I think, is just critical here. Uh, there's counties, or not counties, towns along the Pennsylvania border that a couple of years ago were talking about seceding from New York State and joining Pennsylvania over, uh, 
oil rights, oil drilling rights, or natural gas drilling rights. And so, um, you know, the idea has been out there that uh, the lesser magistrates could rebel against what is going on there from the from the state government. And, you know, our state government has rebelled against the federal government. So I, I'd really be interested to know their defense, you know, in telling anybody that they couldn't do that. Well, and for those who are not familiar, the doctrine of the lesser magistrate encourages people who are elected officials in lower, uh, I suppose, jurisdictions like counties or cities or villages to pass local laws, or if you're a sheriff, to enforce local laws as if they are more powerful than a state law or federal law. Uh, and then it would be tested in the courts and there may be some risk involved. You may lose a lawsuit in the long run. Uh, or you may win. So the benefit is that meanwhile, you can protect innocent children from death. And in the long run, we need to overturn Roe versus Wade. And the only way to do that is to have these kind of trial cases bubble up through the courts. Roe is not a law, by the way. The Supreme Court and all the right. courts do not make law. They simply interpret with opinions. And judges uh, don't have legislative ability although some lawyers agree they're, they're setting a precedent and we should consider that instead of the law, we ought to be in the business of passing pro-life legislation. In New York, they're doing the opposite. Pastor, we have just about 30 seconds left. If you would uh, just mention your website and tell people how to reach out to you. Well, um, of course, the website's been there, johnspeedbooks.com, but I would also really encourage you for, to, to go check out endabortionnow.com for to get involved. And if you'd like to see our, our documentary, it's babiesaremurderedhere.com. Babiesaremurderedhere.com. I'm sure that's a fascinating documentary. They're making the sequel now. Our guest has been Pastor John Speed. Thank you, Pastor. Our website is prayinjesusname.org. Again, that's prayinjesusname.org. Please donate when you visit. Please sign up as a recurring monthly pledge sponsor. Just a dollar a month would help us stay on the air. Call us if you need prayer at 866-Obey-God. We'll see you next time. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.